I'm Tia, and this is Rick. He gets on my nerves. <laughs> and, we, and we're the parents of Raising Cultures. And thank you guys for loving and sharing our picture and our page of Princeton's adoption. We really appreciate you guys so much. Um, and because of that, we have gotten a slew of questions in our inbox regarding adoption and the process and and transracial adoption and we were just going to answer a few questions for you guys and we hope that it helps so um the first question that we got was are all of our children adopted oh he gets on my nerves so <laughs> no to answer that question all of our children are not adopted we have four children I came into the relationship with a biological daughter um, and she was two and a half years old when me and Ricardo got together so she was already there so no adoption for her um, then we got guardianship of one of Zaria's friends from school and um, that has been great and then we have two adopted sons so to answer your question, no, all of our children are not adopted. Um, two of them are, and one of them is adopted in love, but we have legal guardianship of her. So, the next question um, that we've gotten is, um, how is it being parents of multiracial children? What's your thoughts? I mean, you, to me, it's no different. I really don't think about what people say, how people look. I just do my duties and, and keep it moving. I'm really not worried about what everybody else is talking about. As long as I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, that's all that matters. So you just saying just being a dad, just just, just being yeah. a good father. Yeah, it you know, um I think from a mother's perspective, you know, we always want to protect our children and so as soon as something happens where we're out in public and we're getting like weird looks and stares and you know different responses from people regarding um our family you know it, it, it is very frustrating and you know it, it does make you kind of want to you know put your dukes up but you know my husband the police officer i don't want to get arrested anything like that I, my kids need their mama um so <clears throat> you know i've tried to remain as calm as possible and just you know with the racial hypertension i, I guess going on in the world you know, we just have to teach them that love kind of conquers all. And so that's what we've been doing. Um, just loving, loving one another. Um, but I wouldn't say that it's been a cakewalk. No, it has been a cakewalk. But, uh, I just learned not to let, let a lot of stuff bother me. Yeah, he's the easy, breezy one. I'm going to turn up on you just a little bit. Okay, so... The um, third question that we've gotten is, um, um, is Carly and Aiden siblings? Were they siblings? The answer to that is no, they were not siblings. Um, they came uh, at different times. Um, so no, they're not siblings. They're siblings now. They were not siblings when they, <laughs> before. Yeah, um, a lot of people think that because they're both biracial. Um, and then they, you know, they both kind of do look alike now. I mean, they've been around each other for what, six years? something like that and so um, you know what they say the longer you're around people the more you start looking like um another question that uh, we've gotten is um oh uh, is did we have the did we ever go through private adoption oh. baby <laughs> no to answer that question we 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 thought about it we thought about private adoption and because it is extremely expensive, like twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars to adopt, we was like, "Huh." -uh. Um, so we kind of stumbled upon the children's home at the time. It's now Crossmore, and that's how we learned about the foster to adopt program. And so we became foster parents first, and then, you know, through social services and Crossmore and things like that, we've been able to adopt our children. Um, and it does cost, but it's it's significantly um less than it would be if it was just like a, a a private adoption so do you think that if we had to go through a private adoption we would have have adopted 
Yeah, at that point, yeah. Private adoption. You gonna pay twenty five thousand dollars? Yeah, I would say. You so you're saying <laughs> my husband is delusional. I, <laughs> you're saying that we still would have adopted for twenty five a, a kid for twenty five thousand dollars. Yes, if I'm paying twenty five thousand dollars, yes, I want to adopt a Mikey. He's delusional. I'm not paying twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't go. Like yeah, we we pay. It's been okay. a rough go because we've had several miscarriages and um in vitro fertilization didn't work you know things like that so during the time that we decided to become foster parents we made the decision based off us wanting to have more children at the time now i don't want no more mm -mm. no that princeton y'all don't even understand he didn't came and put a t he is the last of the last i don't want not net you want more He's just in this terrible too. When they get out of that stage, you'll be you get your baby. Yeah, he you okay? Okay. I don't want any more children. You said yeah, that I'm not adopting. How many I, times? Not well, because I I felt that we were not finished. Our family was not complete. We needed Princeton to be able to complete our family. But now I feel said like I do. You, you wanted a girl? No. Mm -mm. Two girls, two boys. That's it. He ain't having no more. It's over. I ain't having no more. Oh, look, I'm talking about I ain't having no more. I ain't, <laughs> ain't having none, none of them cheering but one. But, so, we have tons of questions, and we'll try to answer them. Our kids, they have jobs now, so they, you know, they need to go to work. They need to get cars. That's what they need to do. But, we appreciate you guys liking and sharing our story. We like to be very transparent about everything. Oh, and then the last question, because I think this one is really important. Somebody asked, was um, the birth family still involved? And how do we, you know, kind of go about that? Absolutely. Um, my, our son, he still sees his siblings. We're very close with the other family that, that his siblings live with, and we get together often. Um, his birth mom still calls and takes from time to time. We're in the process of getting connected back with Princeton's birth family because we just have to make sure that they're connected to their roots. Um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not biracial or Caucasian. I need them, I need them to know their roots, and they start having questions or anything like that. I need to make sure that they know, you know, where they, where they came from, and just to be connected. You know, I have a job to do, and my job is to to nurture and care for them right now. You know, it's not to be, oh, I'm your only mama. That's not, that's not our job. Our job is to love and care for them right where they are right now. And, you know, we'll, we'll be forever grateful to the bio parents for giving us the opportunity to share in the joy that is our children. I don't think I'll have it any other way. What about you? I definitely love standing in the gap. Oh, we some gap standards. I like it. I like that. I like it. We like standing in the gap. So, anyway. Continue to like, comment, and share, inbox me um, your questions, and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you guys have. Until the next time, raising cultures.